Good afternoon, happy new year, and welcome to our January virtual Perfect Wedding Guide Luncheon. We are so glad that you could be with us today. Also online with you on Zoom are two hosts, uh, Rhonda Griffin and Michelle Stewart. So open up your chat and they'll be talking to you as we go along. Also, there's gonna be a Q&A session uh, toward the end of the afternoon and we hope that you'll uh, participate in that as well. Uh, we have got an update for you today from Alyssa, from um, the accountant that was here on the last um, luncheon. And she wants to talk to you and get you up to date on some of the most current things that are going on in the PPP money arena. So Alyssa, are you there? Are you ready to join us? I am, thanks for having me back. I just wanted to give everybody a, a quick update with uh, what's been going on with the last bill that the president signed in late December. So in that bill, there was a couple of key items. If you received a PPP loan in the first round, uh, then the forgiveness process has been simplified. So if you haven't filed for forgiveness and you're trying to do it now through your lender, don't be surprised if there's like, oh, you can't get to the portal because they're all revamping them for the simplified procedure. Um, so expect that you'll be able to do those within the next couple of weeks. And the simplified procedure is just supposed to be a simple one form that you spent the money the way it was, assuming your loan was under $150,000. So that's good news. Second thing related to that, if you also received an uh, advance of the economic disaster loan, often called the idle loan, um, you may have heard that in the forgiveness process that that actually was going to affect how much of your PPP was forgiven. Well, now that is going to be completely forgiven as well. So that's good news for taxpayers. Um, the last thing in that kind of the key things is that now expenses that you use the PPP funds are actually deductible. So that was actually up in the air. So another huge win for taxpayers. So that's kind of the update on the first round of PPP. Um, there also is a second round of PPP. Uh, it actually started opening up this week. And to qualify for the second round of PPP, you have to have a revenue decline either for your whole year of 2020 compared to 2019 of 25% or more, or that 25% decline can be in any one quarter. So let's say that overall for the whole year, you, had a, a, you were actually up, but in your first quarter of 2020 or second quarter of 2020, your revenues were actually down 25% or more, then you still qualify. And so if that is your case, then you can um, apply for the second round and it will be either based on your 2019 compensation or you can use 2020 compensation. So. That's a quick update. Today is supposed to be the day where it, a lot of the banks are supposed to maybe start being able to transmit uh, those applications. Um, if you're working with a CPA, um, they may be using the AICPA funding portal. I've been doing that for my clients to kind of get applications ready. So once it is open, we can just hit transmit. Um, so, that's kind of the, that's the update that I have quick and dirty uh, from uh, what's going on in the PPP and some of the things that we didn't know about. Um, there is expectations that there's probably going to be uh, more relief that's going to happen in 2021 uh, with the new administration, especially after the results of the Georgia election, but there's no indication yet as to what that might look like. So, um, Hopefully that will help. And um, Emily has my contact information for people who are interested in uh, getting help. And uh, I will leave it at that. Great. We want to say thank you, Elisa, for joining us today. We know you're very busy with all of your clients. And um, Elisa has been a great help to all of us uh, here at PWG with Party Pleasers. And so we just thank you for your wisdom and knowledge and uh, just loaning yourself to us so we can learn more uh, and help our businesses out. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. My name is Emily Munnefelt, and uh, I am here on board with Perfect Wedding Guide. Uh, we are excited today about this luncheon. We are going to be talking about making the most out of bridal shows. Uh, we are in full swing with bridal show season, and so we've brought in some experts today 
Uh, we are so excited to have Mr. Brettel Rama himself, Mr. Fred Caldwell. Hey. Hey, Fred. Good morning, Good morning Thanks for Emily. Being here. Hi, um, Fred is uh, <clears throat> he's a show producer yeah, with Brettel Rama. He is a second generation show producer. Yeah. yeah correct? Yes. Um, his show <clears throat> goes on twice a year, and um, he's been in the industry for how long now, Fred? 35 years. 35 years. Yeah. So lots of wisdom and knowledge, and we're glad you're here. Well, thank you, Emily. So, thank you. It's fun to, to talk with you. We also have Mr. <clears throat> Clark today. He uh, is representing Party Pleasers and TheEventConnection.com. Uh, Jeff can say that you have to, well, you have, or you attend 30 different shows a year, and you've probably been to at least 200 in your uh, career yeah. uh, in the industry for the last 15 plus years. So uh, these guys are here today to kind of give us their wisdom and knowledge and help us navigate bridal show season. Uh, we were sorry that Tracy Claiborne was not able to join us today. Uh, we wish her well and hope that she can join us again soon. So thanks for having okay. us. We're going to jump in uh, and start asking some questions. Um, awesome. Fred, in talking with you, you say that um, vendors don't really have a choice with mm. wedding shows. You believe that we should all attend them. So I'm, can you kind of tell us a little bit more about that? Well, line? absolutely. You know, vendors have called. Bratorama is celebrating its uh, 20th year, actually, in a couple of, of weeks. And over those years, one of the most common questions I get is, I don't know if I should, I don't know if I should be in Bratorama. I don't know if I should do wedding shows. And I'm here to tell you, without the shows, you're missing out on so much marketing research, um, uh, networking, retail, meeting your clients, meeting past clients that uh, bring new clients to you. I mean, it is an overwhelming opportunity for you to succeed. And I don't know how any business can be in the wedding industry and not attend bridal shows. I don't know how you, I, I guess you can do it, but uh, you know, you're missing out on quite a bit. Uh, so I, I would recommend doing them, you know, as smaller shows start out, s start out with ones that aren't maybe here at the event connections has a great event. I don't want to say it's smaller, but they have a, a great show, um, you know, and work your way up to the bigger ones. Um, get, get out there get off your, you know, tush and go, go get in a bridal show, you know, get into the bridal shows. Um, what yeah. do you think makes the difference between a lousy bridal show experience and a, a great bridal show experience? Well, if a lot, Emily, uh, there are probably several out there watching today that are newer, you know, that I haven't ever done one before. And I want them to know, you know, your experience in a show they have to make it a personal one. You know, people come to bridal shows to buy you. And I want you to remember that, guys, out there. They are coming to buy you. Most of the time, vendors make the mistake of spending hours and hour, countless hours and lots of money on their booth and making it, you know, look overwhelmingly phenomenal. But then they forget that that booth is not selling anything. You know, it's just an, a lot of work and a lot of effort where a lot, if you are not willing to put yourself out there at the show, um, you know, obviously you're probably not going to have a, a good experience, but those vendors that are, are willing to jump out there and meet those bride and grooms and talk to those families and, and really sell their personality. Because remember, whether you're a hall, whether you're a photographer, um, a, a, a caterer, um, cake person, whatever, um, they're dealing with you a lot. They're dealing with, especially if you're a hall or if you're a photographer, you know, in the beginning, from the very beginning to the very last song that's played, um, the bride and grooms want to visualize working with you, your personality, and mm -hmm. am I going to like them? Yeah. And then we can talk about what your booth is. You know, after you sell them on you, once they're sold on you, a lot of times, all of a sudden your pictures, if you're a photographer, it's not as important as it was before. And the venue tasting, maybe they don't, they don't care really. You know, as long as the food tastes good, I've read some great references, I'm good. I want you to handle my wedding, mm -hmm. let's sign. So, you know, I think that's the biggest mistake. You know, I teased you when, when you called me, you said, you know, for what do you think about a good versus a bad experience? I said, well, if a vendor comes in with bad breath, the odds are they're not going to have a good experience because nobody's going to want to talk to you. That's right. And they're thinking, <laughs> even gonna, with six feet, even, <laughs> I, even with six feet, you know, so that that's, that's, I know that was a long answer, but that's, that's it. Boy, you Fred, know, I think we got to expand on that because I can't tell you how many times uh, before a bridal show I'll sit down and I'll think, okay, 
do I need to get a haircut? Like I'll look in the mirror and I'm going, man, I'm looking pretty shabby yeah. or is my, you know, I typically wear a tuxedo in my booth. Uh, mm-hmm. Is my tuxedo clean or am I coming to the show with a dirty tuxedo? I, it even bothers me if maybe I had an event late the night before mm-hmm. and I'm out till one thirty, two o'clock and I got to get up and do a show. And I'm like, man, I'm not looking my best. I'm not mm-hmm. on my A game because I know, you know, they're before they're going to buy my service, they're going to look and be like, do I like this guy? And does he seem like he knows what he ta- he's talking about? Yes. And that's where the sale is made. And then mm-hmm. after that, it's just a matter of what's the price. Yeah. What, what do I get and what's the price? And I, yeah, once th- that sale is made in that really those first 15 seconds of that conversation, whether yes, or not sir. they like you, I think you're dead on there. And Jeff, you know, I'll, I'll get, get right back at your point there. A lot of times, if you've knocked it out of the park, that price isn't quite as important That's anymore. Right. You know, like we talked about the photographs or the food at the hall. They're important, yes. But are they going to microscope your price? Are they going to microscope whether or not they like your meatballs? You know what? No, because they've already bought you. That's and that's a show. The internet can't do it. And it can't be. I mean, I guess I uh, let me come back to that statement of the first 15 seconds because you said breath mints. You know, if I go to back in the day when we used to reach out and shake hands, um, (laughs) you know, you go, hi. When that high comes out, if that high comes out smelling like breakfast uh, or like you need to brush your teeth, you've lost the sale. And the rest of that conversation is just wasted energy. You just flushed away all the money you invested in that booth. Yes. And that time because you didn't brush your teeth or, or, you know, use some scope or whatever. Those little details. The little details. Absolutely. You know, I think the other thing is just the smile. Like Mm -hmm. I'll walk around the booth and be like, tell guys under my breath, smile. You know, because we get tired. Yeah. The reality is we're standing there and we're in dress shoes and it's concrete floor. And, yeah. you know, so all of a sudden my countenance, before they even approach me, you got to be approachable. Yes. Um, before they even approach me, that the way you look and whether you're smiling and whether you look like somebody they'd like to talk to. Because people don't naturally just break the ice. Right. It's up to if us. They can avoid, if they can avoid going to your booth, they will. Right. It's weird. We're wired that way. They pay to get in a bridal show and they're all armed with bags and everything else. But then when they get in there, they can't wait to avoid your booth. That's right. Just it's think about when, you, how go, we're wired, when you, know? you go to the store, you go to walk in Target or let's do Kohl's because that's one of my least favorite. Yeah. I, I ran into <laughs> Emily at Kohl's right. the other day, right? You walk in and, and they'll say to you, can I help you, sir? And your immediate response is, I'm okay. Yeah. But you might really need to know where are the sweaters? Yes. But just human nature is, I'd rather not Avoid. talk to you. Yes. I'm going to handle this. And that really plays out at shows because you see the couples, they, they almost side eye you. <laughs> you know, yep. how many side, the, the bridal show is king of the side eye, right? Yes. Do I want to talk to that guy? Because if I turn and look, he's going to talk. Yeah, he's going to get me. So you got to comfortably break that ice and, and, and look inviting. Like, man, I, I do think that guy looks friendly or, yeah. you know, they'll even... You can see them. They'll be an aisle away looking down at the booths. Do, who yeah. do I want to go see there? And they're checking you out. Uh-huh. Um, so I think, Fred, you even brought up in our previous conversations that you're always on stage at a bridal show. Always. Uh, you know, one of the things I tell my guys, uh, we're another company I own is called DJ Butler's. Uh, we're mobile entertainers. I met Tim way back in the day when he, I have to tell you, I was the guy that, well, my dad was the guy that signed Tim Fritz up to his first bridal show ever. So technically, this is all our fault. It's all your, it's all your dad's fault. <laughs> if it wasn't for us, none of this would have happened. I'm pretty sure I was There are grandchildren. Dad, you, you were. Send and, your hate well to the Caldwells. His email yes. address. <laughs> Emily was a young lady at the time. She still was young, obviously, but... Um, and her sister, Tim, dressed, had them in bridesmaids outfit in their booth, handing out inf- information. I'll never forget. And it was great. We were friends from pretty much the first minute we talked. Uh, my dad really thought a lot of Tim. Uh, we were competitors, but not actually. You know, there's enough business for all of us. We learn from each other. Uh, I'm here today, and I can't wait. Uh, you know, I, I look forward to working with Jeff. What a great, I tease every, I say that Tim Fritz cloned, they cloned Tim Fritz over here, but just kidding. Um, but yeah, we're all in this together, guys. 
And uh, that's why we're here today. We're thanking all the businesses that are out there listening. Uh, we want to help you. So hopefully a lot of this will help you. Yeah, so that's, why that's we're great. Here. So yeah. um, I guess I'll throw this over to Jeff. Jeff, how do you prepare for a bridal show? What are some things as you're looking you know, up to the next few weeks, you had a busy schedule with your many bridal shows uh, or wedding shows. What do you do to prepare and get ready for that? Okay, so once we've paid the money and, and we know we're doing a show, um, there's quite a few things that we do to make sure that we're ready to go in that with our best foot forward. Uh, obviously, a show can cost anywhere from you know, 200 300 to twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 to be in a show. Uh, so you got to weigh out the value of the show before you do that. But once we're committed, um, we'll sit before I get in that booth, the first thing I feel like I need to know is what dates do we have availability? You know, um, you mentioned before some people don't do bridal shows. I'm always jealous of those. Some of my photographer friends are like that. They're like, oh, we don't do shows. <laughs> and I'm like, to be you, right? <laughs> to be you. Um, we do shows. And like she mentioned, probably I've probably been at 200 days of shows uh, in my career. So before I ever walk in that booth, I have to know if a bride walks up, do I have her date available and for what services before I engage in that conversation? Uh, because that could just turn into a bad customer experience if we spend time together and then, oh, sorry, we're booked. I can't help you. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, let me just sidebar from that for a moment. For all of us right now, we are all in a boat that um, as vendors – we're looking at our 2021 calendar and looking at these dates going, I've got all these brides from 2020 that have postponed. If, if ever before those dates, I am looking at those dates and, and considering those almost penciled in and not pinned in dates because um, you know, we, we as a company postponed or canceled right near 600 events in 2020, 600 events. So we have all these brides and events on the 2021 calendar and we cannot risk, you cannot risk as a company getting within three weeks of that date and getting a phone call from that couple and them saying, oh, we got married back in December and we forgot to tell you we're canceling right. or you know, we're really not going to do it. It can't be what we thought. We're canceling. Or can we get our deposit back? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm seeing a lot of conversations right now is, mm -hmm. can I get my deposit back? And so as vendors, right now, before you go into bridal shows, you've got to be proactive to make sure those are no longer just penciled in dates, but those dates are absolutely confirmed. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? I'll tell you what we're doing. I feel like they vote with their dollars. Those people have postponed dates, and in many times we've kind of waived policies. I know a lot of vendors I've talked to have, have waived, forcing them to pay, force majeure, whatever it was when they canceled back in March and April of last year. Mm -hmm. But now we're looking at it, and, and now what we are doing is we're coming back around to those couples and saying, we didn't make you pay by that original date, but now we need you to pay by X date to confirm that so that as I go into these bridal shows, if I have dates where I'm not available, I know mm -hmm. that this person has paid their balance. They're committed to that um, because we can't afford, we can't afford as a company to walk up on those dates and have turned away 10 brides and then have five brides cancel mm -hmm. uh, and walk away from that money. We lost enough in 2020, didn't right. we? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. look at the bank account. It's just not there to, to afford to do that again in 2021. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is a long answer, I know. No, this is great. This uh, is helpful. I we've think. got to reconfirm. Are you doing yeah. anything like that? Um, what we've done with all of our DJs is their primary date is booked with a deposit. And when they call any, I, Jeff, I went and I just said anything to do with COVID. I don't care if somebody in your family has COVID. And it's maybe different for you guys, you know, but I, I, I was like, man, I got to be careful. You got to be careful on this thing. Right. You can't be too hard nosed about it. Right. You got to be flexible. I mean, you got to bend over and flip over and do whatever you have to with COVID. Uh, it's a landmine if you're not careful. Um, so what we said, you know, you reschedule, uh, we'll switch your deposit to the new date, you know, and if people want a particular DJ yep. with us and we can't do that particular DJ, we'll switch it to another DJ and let them, you know, get to interview with them and so forth and do the process. Right. Uh, honestly, man, I've rescheduled three times and I'm still doing it. Um, you know, and our policy was before if uh, within um, 30 days they need to pay their full balance if right. they cancel. Mm -hmm. 
that's gone. It's out the door and it no longer exists with us. Basically anything to do with COVID and it's transferred. Now, obviously if you cancel all together, if a bride says we're no longer having our wedding, we're no, not doing it. Okay. Your deposit is now ours. Right. It's over, you know, but if you're rescheduling that event, I don't care if it's in 23. Um, uh, we were talking about that earlier. We'll switch it to 23. Right, right. That's what we've had to do. Yeah, that's the same it's, thing we're doing. But uh, I think, I think as vendors that we have to protect ourselves from those people that cancel altogether. Yeah. Um, and so you need to be able to, to have something to show for your commitment to them. Yes. Um, if that's a deposit or a balance paid in full. So. And again, back to how do we prepare for bridal? I used, uh, a book I read a long time ago, I'm going to recommend a book. It's called The Politics of Experience. I forget who wrote it. But one of the tricks I want you to realize when you're working a show and you see a bride and groom and their family walking down the, the aisle between you and the other vendors and whatnot, try to picture in your mind someone in your world that reminds you of that individual, that reminds you of that mom and dad. Okay, that reminds you of that bridesmaid. There is somebody in your world that will remind you of that bridesmaid, period. And, the, and you do a little conversion in your mind and you speak to those individuals as you're talking to that potential client. Unless it was an ex-girlfriend that was a bad Well, girl. unless it's bad. <laughs> right. That's right. right. You'd be nice. Remember the good days. But that really, really works where you can use that as a little tool. That's neat. Um, yeah. So what, help, what it does is it kind of forces sound. you to have more of a, an intimate conversation because you go into a more personal mode. Absolutely. Yeah. And if too many people think that it's a bunch of strangers, so you got to convert it and say, well, they're not strangers. Because let me tell you, they're very similar. We're all alike. Right. You'll We're be friends by the end of the experience anyway. So. You know, like so that, that's something we do. I do in my mind to prepare at shows and, and that it breaks down the barrier. Mm -hmm. um, Breaking down barriers. Let me go someplace else with that. Another thing we do to prepare for shows is when I come into that booth, I want to make it very easy for that person that walks in the booth to book an appointment with me. I want to make that so simple that they want to do it and it doesn't feel like this is three or four steps or a hassle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, each vendor that's watching this has a different type of business. I know some of you book right in the booth. We do. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot of vendors don't. Venues especially typically, you know, we're looking at, they need to schedule an appointment to come mm -hmm. see the venue. Um, so I'm going to recommend a few things that softwares that are out there. And Rhonda, if you aren't watching the chat right now, you want to pull up that chat. Rhonda's going to post the links to these if you want these. Um, we use a software called You Can Book Me. And what You Can Book Me does is it creates an online calendar scheduling software where right there on their phone or on a screen in my booth, they can see my whole availability, pick a time. And once they schedule it, it emails them a reminder, puts a reminder on their calendar, on our calendar. So they walk away with something scheduled and it'll send them reminders about that appointment as well. Another one that's great. Um, I also use is called Calendly, like calendar, but with an L Y on the end, Calendly. They're just digital scheduling softwares right there in the booth makes it super easy for them to walk away. Um, you mentioned something else before I want to hit on. And that is again, that first impression comes to dress code. <laughs> Some vendors are, more than one staff member in the booth. And I really think it's important, don't you, that we all look at least on par and have some sort of dress code yes. in the booth? Yes, similar, absolutely. Yeah, if you, if you don't look like, if you do not look like a team, they want a team. They want to know everyone's together, combined to work for you. You know, um, some of the other little tidbits, get rid of the cell phones. You know, I, I was telling you, you're always on stage. So if you're checking your Facebook or, or texting, even though it doesn't look like anyone's walking in front of your booth or even right down, someone way down there is. Right. They're looking. And if they see you, it's over. You're not going to sell anything. And, and I'll have vendors come into the show and they'll, they'll at Bradorama, they'll come in. It's always their first, they're always first guys, first timers. And they'll be doing that. And, I, and, and I'll follow up with them and say, you know, that, eh, we didn't do so well. I'll say, we, you, you, weren't, you were playing on your phone. And it only takes one good sale, and you never know where that's going to come from. One of the other things it shows you have to do is stay to the very end. 
You know, I get people that our show's over four o'clock. Ronald Rome's over four o'clock, a quarter till four, three thirty. It's a little slow. Well, let me tell you something. If that bride's still in the building at three thirty, she's a serious bride. Okay. So you want the serious bride, but if you're packing your stuff, she sees you. Oh, you're done. It's over with. If you're there, you're. See- I can't tell you, Jeff, in my career, how many bookings we've gotten. Absolutely. At We're five till four. Always. They're running up. Always. Mom got off. We got here at three fifteen. Where do we sign? I'm the only guy know. to talk to at that point because everybody's packed up. Well, not if I'm there. No, uh, there. I'm <laughs> but you know uh, what I mean. Look over here. Don't look at him. <laughs> you know what I mean. I mean they're Always. packing up, and Always. and you know you gotta you gotta you gotta stay fresh. You gotta stay bright and bushy tailed. Keep and people say, well, we're just breaking down a few things. You break down one thing, the show's over for you. Right. It's over. I don't care if it's just one little sign you rolled up. It's over. You're not going to sell anything. Stay there. You know, everyone has paid to get in most of the bigger events. And if they paid to get in and you're breaking down, you not only have missed that sale, but you've put a bad, really made your company look bad. Like you're lazy. Yeah. You know, bottom line. Uh, right. right. You pay a thousand dollars to be there. That's how you break that down by the hour and you shut down a half an hour. That's like 50 bucks. You're stealing from your company. And- if you will. Other thing we didn't mention was networking before and after the shows, Mm -hmm. you know, during load in and load out, I've gotten to know your guys over the years. I mean, where, you know, if a bride, if I'm on the phone and they're having party pleasers, I read, what's the, what's the guy the talker, you know, you know, I'm talking to the junior you. Jeff Heidelberg. Yes. Jeff Heidelberg. Uh, Every once it's happened maybe twice over all the years where I'm like, yeah, Jeff uh, Heidelberg with party pleaser. I'm like, that guy's a great guy. Oh my gosh. You know, that old company's great. Why? Because I know them, Mm -hmm. you know, and I know that bride when she hears that from another DJ company, oh my gosh, you know how nice. And, and you're, you become one of the family here when you do a bridal show in any market, really, that you're in, but in Cincinnati, especially, I think we're close. And Dayton, sorry, Dayton. Hey, you were, I'm sorry, you mentioned phones there. That took me to something else that's probably my biggest headache with shows and something that as I'm preparing for the show, I always take time to do my homework on before. And if I don't, I regret it. And that is, am I going to have Wi-Fi in my booth? Mm. It's a question that you've got to answer before you get there. If you're using an online booking software, if you're booking online. So if you're going to use Wi-Fi at all, make sure you ask the question Every show is different. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, sometimes I know down at Duke Energy Center where you hold your show, if you want to buy their Wi-Fi and you wait till you get there, it's incredibly expensive for that day. It's outrageous. It's hundreds of dollars for one day of Wi-Fi. So you may want to bring a hotspot in or do your legwork beforehand. Get a hotspot. I always recommend to my clients get a little power pack. They make great power packs now where if, if you don't have a whole lot of of stuff to run you know some djs come in with everything but the kitchen sink and right we don't know anybody no they i wouldn't but but if you do they have a great you can get them at um oh god and on amazon Mm -hmm. and this will be enough to charge your phone your computer uh maybe a certain amount of lighting for photographers it'll get you you can charge it at home set it in your booth i know with our show it'll save you 65 bucks that's a great tactic because those are about 100 bucks you buy one of those it's a battery backup you can use it for your company later and absolutely and you have free electric for every bridal show you ever went you go to you know i would definitely recommend it with you guys you might want to get six or eight of those yeah right (laughs) (laughs) hey uh, stuff going on in that booth you, you know you also mentioned cell phones and not being on your cell phones um mm-hmm. with us as we prepare for shows another big experience we want in that booth, especially now is we want it to be touchless um mm-hmm. and it used to be that you'd see brides walking around with shows at shows with sheets of uh, printed out information so they come with here's my name and address so i can walk around the, the show stickers. and do that the stickers right um the shows that don't do that you'd see vendors with cards because as vendors it's important for us to immediately walk away from that show with feedback about who stopped by our booth Mm -hmm. so that we can reach out and follow up phone calls and emails after the show. Uh, Your big list comes out, what, Mm -hmm. about a week later? Yep. Um, Five days. Exactly. So you get get a show, you're going to get the big list about five to eight days later, but by that time she may have gone and booked somebody else she saw at the show. Mm -hmm. So I need to be able to follow up on Monday or Tuesday. So what we do um, is we've created a touchless system in our booth, just a quick registration using a QR code. Um, and I'll throw another website out there that we use. It's Q, uh, the 
dash QR code dash generator.com. Again, Ron is going to post that over in the text in the chat there if you want that website. But it's a free way to generate a QR code, which is a marker that they can scan with their phones. And what we do is we link it over to a Google form, which is a registration form. So on their own phone, they don't have to touch any of my cards, any pins. They don't have to touch any screens or keyboards. They do it all on their own phone. They're registering. And what's really neat about that is I can create one of those for each one of my staff members if I've got multiple salespeople. So at the end of the show, I can pull that report up and see this guy produced that much. That guy didn't do anything. Smart. You can even get creative and go, I'm going to pay you $5 per registration. Yeah. You know, if you put them on a full commission plan in their booth. If you've got people you want to motivate as business owners, you want to bring somebody in and motivate them to actually produce at the show. Every time somebody registers here, I'll pay you five bucks. <laughs> um, and you have that immediately as the show ends and you can just hand them cash right there in the booth. Totally touchless. Great experience for the brides because it's all happening right on their phone. That's um, good stuff. And even on our phones, payment processing is another big deal that we have to prepare for at the, at the shows if you're booking. You guys book in your booth. Mm -hmm. I know we do. Yeah. Um, so we have to make sure we have our payment processors and ready to close the sale. With that, come down prepared to book. Yeah. I mean, book, like contracts. I, 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 I don't remember the DJ's name, but I used to do shows at an old store called McAlpin's. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you folks might remember McAlpin's. They had mall shows, and I was an 18 year old DJ doing shows, and I did show, show, all these mall shows. It was, I was like, what, what's that girl? Well, anyway, uh, there was some girl that used to sing in the malls. We were the DJs that used to do shows in the malls. And five years what's a mall? of shows, <laughs> yeah, malls might not right. be five years of shows. I did not, and that this old, this DJ came up to me and said, How many contracts did you book? I said, contracts? I said, what are you talking about? I thought the shows were just for passing out information. Right. And he, I, I, I changed my whole marketing where the brides want to get it done, guys. They pack the car up at, at Duke Energy Center. They've parked. They've walked two blocks, rode up two escalator rides, waited through registration, They're you ready. know, all this stuff. They want to check their list off. So come down prepared to book that we talked about bringing your schedule. That's so important, knowing what you have available. Um, say, hey, here's our company. I'm your guy or I'm going to be your manager for your event or I'm going to be your photographer or I am cooking, making this cake for you. Let's get this done. Get, get a contract out and say, let's do it. And they're like, okay, right. they'll do it. And they respect it. So many vendors are afraid of booking or even asking for bookings. And people, if you don't ask, you won't receive. I mean, it's the old adage that is eternal. Ask and you shall receive. We started asking for bookings. I booked signed contracts. At a, we did, uh, Bridal-Rama was October 4th during COVID, by the way. And we had 300 brides there. Okay. And it was a very, I thought a great event. I booked, tw I had signed 20 contracts. My hand hurt. My DJs were done. By the end of the show, we were exhausted. Speaking of that real quick, we are January 30th and 31st Duke Energy Center. Uh, we have space available. So certainly give us a call, Bradorama. I, Tim told me to tell you that. So I'm not throwing in a <laughs> shameless plug. Sir. But yeah, yeah. Um, no, we, we were very similar to that on that uh, booking number in that October show. October 4th, yeah. Um, you know, I, I'll say this too. I think with a bridal show, you're not the only vendor in your category, typically at a show. Um, and, and when I walk up to my booth or even before I get there, the other thing I'll sit down is I'll just sit down and ask myself this one question is, what's going to make me memorable as mm -hmm. a vendor? When that bride walks away from that show, what's she going to go that, remember that company that did this? Mm -hmm. um, they spoke to me this way. They weren't sitting there on their phone. They were, they were dressed nice. Um, they talked about, they, they asked me what was important to me. They asked me some questions, just whatever it is, what's going to yeah. make me stand out from all the other florists in the place or all well, the other photographers. Jeff, the great part about the show, you and I both booked that, that we couldn't book anymore. I mean, we couldn't sign up much more by the end of that. Right. I, I know what, how much you were telling me you did. Well, do you, do you want to go to a show and have five or six competitors or do you want to stay there at your seat and have thousands of competitors on the internet. Which, which one do you prefer? Because when brides come to a show, at Bri I'm going to keep plugging mine because I love it. Uh, Bridal-rama, we might have five or six people in your category. 
Okay, so she feels like she shopped. I got it. People say, why do you have DJs at Bradorama? You're a DJ. You could just, you know, make it your own little thing. And I said, well, if I make it my own little thing, my brides didn't get a chance to shop. And if she doesn't shop, she doesn't feel like she's ready to buy. So usually if we have six DJs, she really only talks to three. So I got to beat you or I got to beat two, two other guys. I, I like those odds. Right. I like them much better than the internet. So you, when people say, you can, when I say you can't afford to do, not to do shows, I'm very serious. You can't afford not to do it, okay? So earlier you alluded to there's other benefits to a show besides just getting leads and brides and customers. Oh, yeah. What would yeah. you say, what are some other those other benefits you've seen in attending? Well, you want to start? Or I was talking about marketing research. Well, benefits, you know? other benefits other than... Booking, booking a wedding, or like, what are some other benefits you see? So oh we're yeah, about networking. We're well, yeah, about absolutely. We always say, if I go to a show and I invest several hundred dollars to be there, and no brides show up, right. do I walk away upset? No, because I still had an opportunity to be in the room with several other vendors that I can meet. I can go see four or five new venues I've never heard of yeah. and talk to them, get their information. And you know, when I'm supposed to be talking to brides, if I don't have any brides to talk to, I'll be making relationships. I'll be building relationships with those vendors who uh, are my friends. It's fun to talk to them, but most, uh, not mostly, but in addition to that, uh, they see oh, he's still in business. Yeah. He's still alive. You know, this is an yes. industry of small business owners that come and go, especially after last year. How important is it going to be this year for people to see that you're still in business, see your face, yeah. see that you're still strong. And the way to do that is to be present at that show. That's also a big reason why we always come to the Perfect Wedding Guide luncheons mm -hmm. is because there's a room full of vendors at that luncheons and they see, oh yeah, party pleasers or uh, DJ Butler's, they're still in business. He's still coming yeah. around. When, when they don't show up, you start to go, I wonder if they're doing okay, yeah. you know, when yeah. they're not at the show. I wonder what's going on with that guy. Is he getting out of the business? Yeah. It, it's just an unsaid thing that's in the back of your brain, and then maybe you don't refer them as much because you're not sure what's going what's on with them. Mm -hmm. So it's huge for networking. And, Mark, one thing we found, marketing research, absolutely invaluable. You know, we're all small businesses, majority of us. So we, we don't have the ability to, to hire a marketing research firm at $5,000 to determine what we should market. But when you're at a show and you have this sales pitch, you have a new product or a new you know, venue, uh, a new room you're opening up, whatever, and you want to throw it by brides and see what they think about this idea you have. One after another, after another, after another, they come and they come and you throw your pitch and throw your pitch and throw your pitch and throw. Well, by the third or fourth or fifth one that have rolled their eyes at your pitch, you now know that your pitch needs to be out the door and you need to start it's, it's over. It's a great place to do marketing. <laughs> you find out that right. your pitch, pardon my French, sucks after about five brides because she's giving you direct feedback right. that it would take you six months over the phone because guess what? When you're on the phone or you're on the internet, she's just rolling her eyes to her dining room. Right. She's rolling her eyes. You don't know what she's, she, you don't know. So you spend six months on a pitch that's not working. Bridal Rama, you can do it in about, 30 minutes, you know, well, this idea really sucked. I got to start over. Uh, also, salespeople, most of us uh, start, uh, you're beginning your sales life, if you will, um, or fine tuning it. You know, I talked to some guys where they're like, ah, I'm a natural salesman. I had, I had a vendor yesterday tell me that. I said, you know, I've been doing this 35 years. I need bridal shows to sharpen my ax. I need my sales presentation to be on track with not only competition, but the brides are changing what their expectations of us. And without being in the trenches at, at a bridal show, you're not, you're not experiencing any of that. And you have no, it's like flying blind. You, you could do it, but I'd much rather... <laughs> take the blinders off and fly, you know? So the marketing research part of the event, along with the networking, uh, like zero brides show up for the networking. You're right. You could, we could shut the door. We could shut the doors at Bridalrama and everybody have a blast for two hours and we'd all make lots of money, mm -hmm. you know, That's right. for right. just the one fee. I, I, I'm glad that. That's why I never walked away from a show going, man, that was just not worth it completely. Uh, yeah. Unless it's, 
vendors that don't pertain to my industry in the room mm-hmm. yeah. you know, that, I, that I'm not going to gain any networking from. Uh, so, Fred, you do have a show coming up, and you both yeah. have attended other shows the last couple of weeks. Um, mm-hmm. What is the uh, – What's the energy right now? We're in the middle of a pandemic. What are you guys seeing and feeling with brides and grooms that are coming to shows? What's the energy like that you're seeing? Uh, unbelievable. You know, I did a uh, Ron Deisling show um, in Mason Sunday. And I, I've been doing this third. I, I cannot believe how hungry the bride and grooms are to talk to us. I mean, like nothing I've ever seen. You know, they're in, I guess, everybody's inside so much the opportunity to come out and, and meet wedding vendors. They were so open and so excited and so glad. And one of the things I'm thinking guys is for the first time in our industry, brides have to accept, I was talking to Derek, um, Jeff Hill video. Thanks. Um, earlier for the first time ever, brides come to the reality that someone can take her wedding date away from her. It sounds so odd to say that out loud. So man, when she has the opportunity to grab an opportunity to make sure her wedding, more than ever before, where she can grab that opportunity and not let go, the passion that I saw Sunday at that show was beyond belief. You know, all, so many more grooms were there than normal. Mm-hmm. You know, I, at least, I don't know if you noticed that, but all the grooms were there, you know, because they haven't been, out anywhere yeah. it's like it's sort of a quasi date i guess you know we get to go to a bridal show together we get well, to leave the house they, yeah. they get to leave the house but, but the important thing is when the groom's there and the bride together now we got decision makers you know at bridalrama we always give out we we sell our tickets buy two get two free which encourages the mom and dads to come with them okay or we give our vendors comp tickets they give the bride four you get the mom and dads. You know that. At Bridalrama, you see a lot more mom and dads than most of the shows, yeah. I bet. And when the mom and dads are there, guess what? The check writers are there. So bottom line, the momentum, I think, at Bridal Show, the, the few that, are, ex- that exist, which we're one of them. Right. Uh, I've kind of seen both sides you know, of the coin. Uh, yeah. We did a virtual show. Uh, in the Columbus market, and the virtual show was not successful. We did your show in October um, in person. That was not virtual, and that was very successful. So we've kind of seen both sides to the coin. Uh, I don't know what the ingredients were there that didn't make that successful. I wasn't at the show. Uh, Ron Diesling does shows. His company is called A Bridal Affair. Right. You can go look up. Uh, all of his shows, he has more shows coming up in the next uh, 30 days. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for a show to come jump into, he's got one in Columbus and that's Dayton. right. That's right. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you're looking for a show, that's also a great show to look at. Uh, Very well. successful. Uh, great. We'll plug him since we were talking about his show. Well, you know, it, it, it was unbelievable, Jeff. It was unbelievable. I mean, I've been, like I said, you've done 200. I've probably done 400 mm-hmm. and I had never been so tired that I wanted to take a break before. And I didn't take a break. It's because I wasn't there. Brother, I was just pumping away. <laughs> You're right. It's because you guys weren't there to take over some of that. There you go. Okay, so tell us again. You have a show coming up on January 30th and 31st. Yes, I have room. Bridalrama.net. Give us a call. Available. Yeah. What are you guys doing to be COVID safe or COVID oh, friendly? Yeah. What are we doing this year that makes it, you know? Absolutely. We pulled this off in October the 4th. So we already did this with COVID, okay? Um, 15 foot aisles where we normally have nine foot, uh, 10 by 20 booths where we usually have 10, uh, 10 by 10 as an option. Um, eight foot backdrops are normal side eight foot. Uh, we call them side drops. Now we created a new term. I'm going to patent that. See if we, no, I'm just kidding. But at eight foot side drops where the, 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 the curtains actually separate you from the booth next to you. Okay. Uh, we also have hand sanitizer stations. We also have um, 300 guests limit in the room. But what happened in October was great because, you know, we had a little line. If there's no line, then it's not worth going to, right? If you go to a concert and you're not, <laughs> who wants to be there? So there's a little line. Uh, as people went in, uh, the Duke Energy monitored. So as they came in, we, as people went out, we let more people in. And before you know it, it was flowing very nicely all day long. So we had a limit on the amount of people in and 
the famous masks, everybody who had masks on all day. I will say so, those nice wide 15 foot aisles were a luxury because typically it's a pain with people being crowded in the aisles at nine feet. Um, I loved it. <laughs> I love that nice wide aisle. Yeah, it is changing things a little bit. You know, uh, the, the, the space with the side, I, I thought I'm going to hate these side dividers because people can't see. But once they got into our booth, it was like our little cubby. You know, it was like a little, I don't know, Gilligan's Island. It was our own little. <laughs> you sucked them in. You know, and, and, and they stuck around longer. I don't know. It, yeah. was, it was neat. So. And Jeff, you mentioned you're doing touchless registration at your booth. So there's some other things that you're doing to just mm -hmm. be COVID friendly. Right. That's right. Right. Uh, and I think a lot of vendors are doing things like that. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Duke Energy Center is the cleanest day of the... I forget what it's called. Let's just say it's the clean energy rating or clean convention center rating of America. They have the highest, they, they had to go to this program where everything is sterilized throughout the whole building. And it was a government, you know, where they have a checklist and they have to do everything every single day and all that stuff. They have the highest stars and number one in, in Ohio. So Duke Energy is this sterile place to sell. Awesome. You know? All right. This has been great. I've loved all the information you both have shared. I want to thank, thank you for your time. Um, we actually have a little bit more time. We wanted to open up for questions from you all. So those that are uh, joining us virtually, if you have any questions, the chat room is open. Uh, we are just going to take a couple minutes to uh, make sure that we've covered everything that you're curious about and yeah. uh, open the floor to these guys responding to some questions that you have. So feel free in the group chat right now. You can um, ask some questions. I know I was just curious. I wanted to ask, um, what kind of clients are you seeing right now? Like what, what kind of weddings are people booking? Are they booking, you know, small intimate weddings right now? Are they booking big? I'm just curious of what the... There's two, there's two different types of clients we're seeing right now. Some of them come in and they are the small intimate event. We also see people, it really depends on the way they feel and are thinking about the whole COVID issue that's going on. We know our country kind of has two separate viewpoints on that. And boy, that plays out when we, we sit down and meet with them. Um, and I do think um, based on the bookings we've seen in the last couple of weeks here at the beginning of January, that a lot of people expect that by midsummer, this is not going to be an issue. We're seeing a lot of big events booking in the midsummer and, and fall. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 250 people, 300 people is what they're expecting. Um, I even am seeing now a lot of people that are more comfortable booking last minute small events. We just yesterday booked a March 21st wedding, you know, just out of the blue, uh, less than 60 days or 60 days away. Um, so mm -hmm. there are some last minute things that are great filling in. And then the last thing is, is we're getting a lot more off peak dates. So Fridays and Sundays and mm -hmm. Monday weddings and Thursday weddings and stuff that you would never see before all of a sudden are somewhat of the norm because they've postponed or they're just, it's a small event. It's only going to be my family. So why not do it on a Wednesday night? Mm -hmm. oh. uh, tents, mm. you know, a lot of That's on right. property, which is great because there's not someone telling people what they can do yet. Right. But um, tent uh, in a field, private property stuff is something we've seen. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, yeah. A lot of stuff in the backyards of people's houses and things like that. Um, also, yeah, I agree. The smaller events are closer now. But gosh, the big uh, the bigger ones are getting big, aren't they? Yeah. Like, I mean, bigger than uh, than years before where and they're like we're going to go all out for this so uh in the summer and the fall we're seeing a 250 300 all day long actually mm, yeah. That's so great. great this is good okay i'm just double checking to see if we have any questions it looks like we don't um i think we covered a ton of information so uh, awesome. this has been wonderful we have i've been seeing in the chat we do have a couple others that are reminding us um we've got wendy's bridal show in 2022 that um, is you can start planning for That's right. um katie mentioned that and then also i believe uh uh let's see brides mafia uh also is having a spring show so take a look at the group chat and you can see things there um Emily, we do have one question Great. from Go Pendra. Are you finding that vendors in your same area are cutting prices in order to book their boost their bookings? So the question is, if you couldn't hear it, are we finding that vendors are having to cut their prices or are we cutting our prices trying to up our bookings, I guess, to fill space? It would be the opposite of that. Um, space is limited in 2020. 
yeah. 21 because all my 2020 brides pushed into that. Right. Um, and so supply is down, which tends to raise prices. We, we yeah. haven't raised our prices. We've held our pricing. Um, but I have not heard anybody that's right. That's lowering pricing. No, not at all. The up, op- you're right. I agree a hundred percent. The opposite. <laughs> I mean, usually sometimes I'll look and if I have a lot of inventory on jocks. I'm like, but now I'm just like, you either want it or not because somebody right. else, I'm going to hang the phone up and it's going to ring again. And that's ha- I'm sure that's happening to you guys. Absolutely. Okay. Dates, so. dates that don't, aren't normally sold out by now are so already sold out because they've been yeah. October. It. It's crazy. All right. We do have another question. Are you booking events for individuals who will not comply with health required protocols? Um, and if so, uh, is that responsible? I have, I, do not, uh, that's not my position to, ju- I mean, right. where I'm a vendor. So I, I go in and I, if, I, if I have an event, uh, my job is not to make them comply with anything. I show up, I, I do whatever the government tells me I have to do as far as wearing a mask in public and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That is a private event. I mean, we are in the private event industry. You know, I'm not a bar DJ. Uh, or, a, you know, any, anything in public, really, it's all private. M- most of your stuff is mm-hmm. corporate private. So would you agree? It's not really our, yeah, I think I have to, to ask myself the question too, that, that question kind of leads me to think that somehow I'm going to be able to predict what the government regulations are going to be in October. How Correct. would I know, you know, the wine could get on the TV tomorrow and change things. The mm-hmm. governors are changing things every day. Um, so to say, would I book an event that's not complying? I have no idea what those are going to be. Great, Ant. That's Will perfect. I, yeah. though, make sure that my guys are safe mm-hmm. um, or my staff is safe and that they're doing things in accordance with those mandates and those uh, regulations? Absolutely. Yes. Um, at the event. They're, they're recommended that they wear a mask. Um, and then in addition to that, many of the venues that we go into, because we actually work closely with the venue in our part yeah. of the industry um you know a dress person's completely different but when i go into a venue a venue for us dictates uh, many of those regulations right it was interesting because i just did a wedding in indiana and it was entirely different, different. yeah because their mandates are different the venue handled it differently mm-hmm. um and so i can't take that booking and predict what the venue's rules are i can't predict what the laws are going to be at that time um Will I follow them once we get there? Sure, we'll follow them. Yes. And, um, you know, if, if the bride and groom ask us to do something outside of that, then we're going to say, we have to follow these certain guidelines. Correct. I'm, I cannot force anybody to act anyway. Correct. Um, and our attorney told us that if they make those choices, they are admitting and accepting the risk, whatever that choice might be. If I say there's no dancing, and three of them decide to dance in the corner. That, that is not anything that I caused or forced. I was playing music. Yep. Uh, am I going to get on the microphone, though, and go, hey, everybody fill the dance floor. It's time to party. No, we're not going to do that because that would be against the mandate at yeah. today's date. And we have to go with what hall, what the, the, the venue really is going to dictate that. The question, I'm glad we talked. It was a good question. Um, for all the vendors, I don't care if you're a cake person or a caterer or a photographer or a DJ, doesn't matter. The hall is going to dictate the rules of that reception or wedding ceremony both or, and or both. Um, so we as vendors have to just follow whatever that hall tells us to do once we're on their property. Right. Um, assuming they're making us follow the rules dictated by our governor. So if they're not making, if the hall isn't making us follow those rules, we follow them ourselves and everybody should be good to go. I hope that was Yeah. Are you you finding that the percentage of couples, are you, are you finding that they are wanting to follow the rules or are you finding more couples that are going through with the weddings? It it sounds like you said 50, 50. You're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say it's about that. I mean, I think if you walk in a grocery store, how many people are wearing the masks and it's about the same percentage that I'm seeing brides that yeah. want to follow the rules and that don't want to follow the rules. Um, we're obligated to do things by the book. Right. Um, 
And, you know, then they make personal choices, just like if a grocery store says you've got to wear masks to come in this door and then they choose not to, you know, that was their choice um, as an individual. Right. Okay. Yeah, this is good. This has been very helpful. Um, well, thanks for coming, Fred. Thank you. you. Thanks for having me. This is great. And, um, Before we wrap up, yes. I, there are a few new things that I did want to mention okay. um, that we have going on. Um, number one, an exciting thing. Um, Many of you saw an announcement several months ago that, that we've launched a new company, theeventconnections.com. Uh, we really didn't talk about, before a show, it's important to make sure that all your online presence is accurate. <laughs> so before you go out to a show, because after that show, the bride's going to go research you. If she doesn't decide at the show, she's going to go Google you and look at you on the knot, look at you at wedding wire, look at you on the event connections or perfect wedding guide websites and read about you. And if that information isn't accurate, um, it's going to take her to the wrong spot, the wrong website, the wrong phone number, and then you're out the door. Mm -hmm. So, so important to do your uh, homework on your sites before you go. That's, I think a general rule. You got to keep that updated, but right after bridal shows, your traffic goes way up on that. Mm -hmm. um, the event connections.com. Uh, is a brand new website that we've just launched. And I would encourage vendors to take a look at that and getting their listings put up there. Um, a beautiful site for brides to find you. And if you're a venue um, or you want to do some sort of a virtual tour in your shop, it's got the ability to have a virtual tour of your shop or your venue space on that site. So more than ever, brides are wanting to tour venues virtually and it will let you do that. Mm -hmm. So they can just walk right through your venue, see everything, right on that uh, website. So please take a look at that. Now, in conjunction with that, having done all these shows and figured out touchless stuff, we've also uh, put together a new software that I'm going to talk to you about. Okay. Soon, okay. Uh, that yeah, is yeah. for anybody that's a bridal show producer watching this. So if we've got Katie on here, probably um, this is for you too. Um, but, and as a vendor, something to be asking for, we have a new software um, where essentially what it's going to let brides do is register, uh, use their phone to walk through the show, and any vendor that she wants to have information on, just like I said we do in our booth, she would use an app that's on her phone, scan that marker. She can take notes on that vendor. She can say, I love them. Uh, I hate them. I kind of like them. Their price was good. Their price was bad. That way when she gets home, she has a report of the people she talked to all put together with all that information right there. Um, she can just scan those codes as she walks through the show. Um, when that bride registers, she also gets a little sticker or a badge that she wears herself. And so Fred can, when she walks up to your booth, she shows that and you scan that. And now on your report, immediately after the show, you see all the brides you talk to. You see your wow. notes. Um, and it's even automated to where it will, uh, it can send out some follow-up emails. So right after the show, she can get an email from you that says, thanks for stopping by to talk to me today. Here's the links to my website. If you want to book, click here. Hmm. Um, things that you can custom design uh, within that app. But immediate follow-up to a bride from a vendor's perspective yeah. um, and all of that reporting right there for you. So, so as you walk away, so that would be a touchless uh, software that we've got. And hopefully you'll be seeing that at some shows coming out. Um, and that'll be through the event connections as well. So neat new stuff. Awesome. Great. Things to help us as vendors yeah. make touchless more possible. Um, Sounds great. And more, more Sounds great. All right. Well, like any other luncheon, we love to do giveaways. So right. today yeah. we're going to be giving away uh, three Starbucks electronic gift cards. We'll be sending them to you. Um, in the Ooh. chat right now, we are asking, what are some um, questions that you have or topics you'd like for us to cover in future luncheons? So we would love for you to participate right now and just letting us know, what do you want to learn about? What you know, topics can we cover in the next few months that will help you become a better uh, wedding professional, wedding vendor? Um, you can do that for us. But I'm actually going to have you guys help me out. That guy's got to do it. Just grab a, grab a name. Grab two one. names. All right. And two. All right. And we're going to see who wins the first two. If you. Ron Schuler. Ron, Ron Schuler. All right. There we go. Outstanding photographer. Ron Schuler. Shannon Wright. Shannon Wright. Shannon so Wright. these are names that we picked out from those that pre-registered for today. And I'm waiting to see if you guys could go ahead and just let us know. What are some future topics you want to see here? We'll go ahead and just pick one more from the pre-registration. One more. Let's do it.
Sherry Larson. Sherry Larson. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been a great time. We thank you for joining us today with Perfect Wedding Guide. Uh, we hope to see you next month. Uh, we host a luncheon every month on the second Wednesday of the month. Uh, we'll begin uh, virtual again next month. So join us and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much.